do know why robots often go to gather dust in the corner? Unfortunately, it's quite common. A company might correct its product line due to market demand, or it might receive a massive order for something else. Welcome back to a Badger Robotic Welding, and today we're going to explore what to do if robots are not effective, or if you want to increase robot utilization. Let's take a look at an example. There was a Panasonic robot with a positioner at a site in Kansas. There are two work zones. When the robot welds in one zone, you can load the part in another one. The company used this robot to weld rotors. After installing a machine vision sensor and a Badgie software, they increased the utilization of this robotic cell several times over. Now, Craig will tell you how he runs this cell. Before we got the software, I'd have to go inside the machine and actually program parts with a teach pendant while maneuvering the torch around manually, and it was a pain. But now, this is the chart. The chart has the different welding paths, which are listed over here. I can go in and check the uh, seam data to see exactly where the tool is going to be as it's welding. Uh, if I'm confident that I'm ready to run, I can hit run and add to cell. And then it'll be there in my operator tab, ready to go. Next, I need to load the part. Now I can put it any way I want to in this chuck. It doesn't matter because the camera on the robot cell will look for it. It will find where the veins are in relation to the shaft and it'll compensate for that. So I don't need to have any special fixturing or jigs in order to weld this part properly. Now that I have it on the outside of the robot cell, I can go to service. It's on table A. So I click table A, I start, and it will move it into the machine. Now I can go ahead and press start. And it shall begin finding the part. As you can see, the robot camera is looking for the part. It scans the entire area to see what's all there. This process takes just a few minutes. It's done scanning, so now I just have to wait for it to pull up the tab to allow me to check what the robot has found. So I can do that. There's a slight variation between the model and the physical part, but of course that is to be expected. But the touch sense will compensate for that. So I think this is good enough, so I'm going to hit confirm. And now it should start touch sensing and welding. Right there you can see it's touch sensing the part. It's looking to find the intersection of the vein and the shaft.
Thanks to machine vision and algorithms, robots are becoming flexible and adaptive. Like humans, they can easily see the part and understand the task. In other words, they can easily switch from one product to another in minutes without programming. This allows manufacturers to use robots effectively. As shown by Craig, they weld the rotors, but there are different types of rotors. Moreover, they are pre-assembled manually, which means that the rotor blades can be fixed with slight deviations. Robots can see this and adapt to changes. Also, previously the company could not use robots to weld products with pipe and pipe designs because it was difficult to program. Now it is possible. In addition, currently it is not necessary to measure the part's position with a ruler when loading it into the robot's work area. Robots automatically recognize the position using machine vision and adapt their path. Parts can be freely placed in the work area. Another change. Now the robots can be operated not only by Craig, who knows how to program them and the special skills and knowledge, but also by other employees. So the robotic cell can be used 24-7, even when Craig is off or sick. So, what does robotic retrofit mean? This means you install software and machine vision, for example this, that, and that guy over there to your existing robotic cell, and away you go. We'll show you some examples. Here is the simplest robotic configuration. One Fanuc robot. Quite a large work area. And here, very different metal structures are welded. For example, it is a rather large design with a lot of seams. Also, here is a design with a pipe where there are only a few seams. One additional example. There is also a Fanuc robot with a welding table. More than 150 different types of parts were welded here. The robotic cell's configurations can vary. In the description, there's a link to the top 40 most popular robotic configs. Last week, we invited you to name a part in the comment section, and we would describe the best configs. Thank you. Work is in process. And remember, subscribe, and see you next time.